So you just bought yourself a Ubiquiti Dream Machine Pro, maybe a Pro Max or an SE, and you need to get this thing set up with some network configs so you're not just sitting there with a $500 paperweight. Well, I got you. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a network, assign it to a VLAN. You're gonna also push that network to your network devices, like your Switch or your WAP. Not that WAP. And I'm even gonna show you how to assign it to a wireless network if you want to. And also, we're gonna throw some razzle dazzle in there and we're gonna show you how to do bandwidth limits and a few other cool things like that if you want to, as well as segment it so it can't talk to anything, specifically like if you're trying to create this for an IoT network or maybe a guest network. And the best thing about this is it's only gonna take you three steps and we're gonna get it done in less than 10 minutes, I hope. If not, uh, you're obviously gonna know that. But uh, let's go ahead and get into it. All righty, so let's go ahead and log into that Ubiquiti router. I've already done that, so let me go ahead and switch over. All right, so you can see here, I'm on my landing page of my Ubiquiti router, and I'm gonna go ahead and click this to get to the main dashboard. And from here, we're gonna go to settings. We're gonna go to networks, and we're gonna go ahead and create a new virtual network. Uh, name it whatever you want, so test. This, you're probably only gonna have one uh, Dream Machine Pro or router on your network. Just leave it at what it is, which is gonna be the default one that you're currently working on. Uh, leave this the same. This is just the interface that you're gonna use to get out to the network so that these devices on this network can actually reach the internet. Turn off auto scale and go ahead and you can generate a random network if you want, or if you have one in mind, just go ahead and uh, specify that. So let's just say I wanna make 10.1. Uh, let's go with 130.1. So this is going to be the IP address of the router. It's going to be the default gateway uh, for the network. And the net mask is going to be a slash 24, which allows 254 devices. So we'll go ahead and leave those the same. And then from here, we will go ahead and switch this to manual VLAN. So we need to assign this a VLAN. So I'll just match it with the third octet of the network up here, which is 130. So let's do that. VLAN 130. Now from here, you can decide if you want this to be a guest network. So if it is a guest network, this network will not be able to uh, communicate with any other networks that you have on your network. However, it can still reach the internet if you, of course, allow internet access, or you can switch to isolate network, which won't allow it to talk with any other networks, or the devices on the same network won't be able to talk to each other either. From here, we'll go down to DHCP server. If you have your own DHCP server, you can specify that with DHCP relay. If you want to literally IP every single device on your network manually, you can do to none. Turn on. No, no, no. Or if you want a DHCP server, which is probably what you want, you'll go ahead and leave that. And this is going to be the server that assigns all the IP addresses to the devices on this network. Uh, you can specify the range here. So if you don't want it to start at 10.1.130.2, in my case, I can specify that here saying, hey, I don't want it to start until 10.1.130.10. So the first device that connects to this network is going to get this IP, then 11, 12, and go on from there. And you can actually limit it. So instead of going all the way to 254, Let's say I only want 10 devices to be able to reach this, honestly. So 10.1.130.10 to 10.1.130.20. So they only be able to basically allow 10 devices on the network. We can do show more options. You can assign an NTP server if you'd like. You can also do TFTP servers, option 43, if you know what that is. So you can do some content filtering on this. However, if you wanna use uh, the content filtering provided by the DNS server 1.1.1.1, which is something that is out there uh, provided by Cloudflare or even 9.9.9.9, you can specify those. When a device connects to the network, they will get these NT, uh, DNS servers. And you can specify other things as well. But we're just going to leave it at this and we'll go ahead and press add. So now we've created our network. And let me speed this up a little bit because it looks like I'm not going to reach that 10 minute. Uh, I'm hack I was going for. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and actually go to our Wi-Fi settings if we're creating a Wi-Fi network to associate with this. If you're not, you can go ahead and skip ahead a little bit. I'll put a timestamp. Um, but in, the, in any case, uh, we are gonna go ahead and create one. So we'll create new. And I'm just gonna name it the same essentially as the network just to not confuse myself. From here, you're gonna assign the Wi-Fi password that you want. Uh, so I'll just do password one, two, three, four, five. And I think I mistyped that a little bit. So any device that connects the network needs to put this password in, of course. And we're gonna assign it to that new network we just created earlier. So now this wireless network will be associated with this new network that we just created previously. Now you can decide which access points, if you have multiple access points, you want to broadcast this. I'm just gonna leave it at all, but you can do specific if you want and assign it to just a specific one, but I've only got one anyways. And then we'll do manual. 
So you can enable hotspot essentially, which will essentially any device that connects to the network will be directed to a specific splash page that they might have to log into, check a box. Uh, that's going to be more for stuff like your businesses. And then we can also, we can hide the Wi-Fi name. So you have to manually input it in to actually connect to the wireless network. It won't broadcast the SSID essentially. You can do Wi-Fi speed limit. So we won't do it now. We won't enable it now because we haven't created the speed limit profile, but this will limit how much bandwidth a specific device on the network can use. And we will leave the majority of this. Yeah, we'll leave all this the same. If you want to look into any of these, you can, but I'm not really worried about it. And we'll add the Wi-Fi network. And now from here, we're going to go ahead and actually go to our ports. So the ports that are on the stream machine. And in my case, my access point is actually connected to port one. And in order for this access point to be able to broadcast that wireless network, or in this case, if you're not going to use a wireless network and you want to connect this network and push it down to a switch, uh, if the ports that you're connecting your switch to is not automatically set to all, which is a trunk, it'll essentially push every single network down to the switch. You would need to come in here and specify it on the port that you're connecting your switch to. In this case, I'm a brokey, so I don't have a switch. Uh, so I'm just going to push it down to the access point, but it would essentially be the same thing for your switch if you're doing it. So you would connect onto the port. Tag VLANs. I'm going to add that network we just created, which is the test and save and apply changes. So now that network is actually pushed, being pushed down to the access point or in your case, the switch, if you have one, if you don't have it set to trunk, which trunk will just push them all by default. And that's it. Alrighty, so if I actually go into my uh, phone here, you can see I'll enable my Wi-Fi and we'll look for that uh, wireless network that we just created. There it is right there. So test. Enter that password we uh, set earlier and I'm actually connected. And now if you actually go into that, you can see here I actually did pull an IP address and that IP address is 10.1.130.10, which is in that range that we specified earlier. Uh, so it looks like we are good to go. Alrighty guys, so that's about it. We went ahead and created a network. We went ahead and signed it a VLAN and also assigned it to a wireless network. We then pushed that network to our switch. If we had one, if we weren't a broker like me and also assigned it to our WAP and was able to connect to it. Now let's go ahead and actually show you how you can assign bandwidth limits and then even show you how to do a captive portal for that network if you choose to. So we'll go ahead and go back here and we'll go to profiles instead of networks and then we'll go to Wi-Fi speed limits. And the thing that sucks about this is you can only do bandwidth limits for wireless clients. So essentially, if you do create a network and assign it to a wireless network, the only thing that's going to be limited is those devices connected to the Wi-Fi itself, not the actual physical network if someone plugs into this network physically. So anyways, we'll create a new. We'll just label it uh, Wi-Fi 10 megabits per second. So download and upload, they're only going to have 10 upload and download megabits per second. And that's going to be per device. So each device on the wireless network associated with this network is going to have that limit. And then if we actually go back to networks, or excuse me, Wi-Fi and go to that test network, we can then edit it and actually go down here. Where is it? Wi-Fi speed limit and assign it that Wi-Fi 10 megabits per second and apply the changes to it. And that's it. Now they're going to have uh, limits. And uh, be aware, I think I just saw all my clients get disconnected from each of my different wireless networks as I applied that change. So that's something you're going to want to take into account when you're doing this, that you are bouncing your uh, devices that are connected to the network. So everything's going to have to reconnect, potentially. At least that's what just happened in my experience. Uh, let's go ahead and do that captive portal as well. So we'll go ahead and create a captive portal for anybody connecting to the network. Uh, they'll have to actually maybe check something or log in basically so that they can actually uh, connect to the network. So we'll go back into test from Wi-Fi and we'll go ahead and enable that. We're going to do captive portal. So we'll go ahead and switch that over to captive portal. And then from here, we'll go ahead and press apply. Now, if a device connects to it, they are going to receive a captive portal that they need to check. I think let's see all right so let's test that so we'll connect back to that wireless network again however it wants us to actually sign in so we'll click it and in this case it brings me here and i have to actually log in essentially in this case i'm just checking saying you know that i agree to connect and that's it so you can obviously go and get more in depth with these settings and uh, specifically identify how you want them to acknowledge that captive portal by using passpoint 
but that's going to include uh, setting up a radius on your network. So if you do have that, you can go ahead and do it. And there's a lot more you can assign to it, but I'd create a whole nother video on that. But that's it, guys. We went ahead and created a network. We assigned it to a VLAN, assigned it to a wireless access point, and we also threw in a few little razzle dazzles. Uh, just so that you guys can get your network set up i hope it was helpful if it was definitely drop a comment and a like below make sure you subscribe when i hit 500 subscribers i'm gonna be giving away a raspberry pi 5 good luck with the unify stuff uh drop a comment down below let me know if you guys want me to do anything else and i appreciate you i'll see you in the next one peace